this diagram shows the overall concept of the um, Devonian reefs, how they grew. They basically grew as, as limestone platforms, rim by reef. This is the back reef area of the platform. There's the um, reef flat subfaces, the reef margin subfaces, then the reef will slope facies in front of the reef, going down into deep water, down the marginal slope into the basin, and that there was deposited the four reef subfaces before it descending into the basin, the deep water basin. This is a, uh, a cross section showing much the same thing: the platform, marginal slope, and basin the um, platform fasces, the reef flat subfasces, the reef margin subfasces, the reefal slope fasces. The reefal slope is the upper part of the slope in front of the reef where there are some reef building organisms and having very steep depositional dips uh, going down into the basin. Uh, this diagram um, figure 18 illustrates the recognized um, formations, rock formations in the area um, in various parts of the reef complexes. You have the Napier Formation, the Parker Hills Formation, Virgin Hills, Gogo, Sadler, Bugle Gap Limestone, and then um, the Wingina limestone, Malara limestone, Pilara limestone, the Kajibit formation. These are units that are actually mapped. We map them out on, on maps of the area. Um, and here we have the, the, um, the age of these different ones. The reef complexes uh, range from around 385 million years uh, through to 359 million years before present. And then this is a, a cross-section, again illustrating the various um, units in the reef complexes. The back reef limestone, which is the main part of the platforms, the limestone platforms, is called the Polara limestone um, and then there's units in the marginal slope and basin facies, the Virgin Hills, Sattler and Gogo formations, then the Pilara and Wingen limestones and the Fairfield group. These are all units that are used in actually mapping out the, the uh, reef complexes themselves on the surface. We have produced detailed maps of the whole of the area showing the structure and distribution of the reef complexes. Is that all you want? Yeah, that's fantastic. What's on the next page? <laughs> next page. So we'll be working on the next. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> what you got? Hmm. Wow. That that just shows you a. Um, an overall cross-section through the reef complexes. The older reef complexes were retreating reef complexes. They were getting smaller and smaller in size uh, through time. So the maximum extent was in the um, early part of the Pilara limestone, but by the later Pilara limestone they shrunk considerably. Then during the Romanian, the latter part of the Devonian, the reef complex advanced over their own and marginal slope deposits. So the Nilara limestone, which is the back, mainly back reef, and the Wingen limestone, which is mainly reef. And the Wingen limestone was growing out over its own marginal slope deposits. Wow. Which... So is that that's what you can see as you're walking through the gorge? Well, you can see parts of that. Mm, mm. Yeah, parts of that. It's on the next page. 
Well, that, that just shows the, the main fossils that have been used to date the different parts of the um, reef complexes are the arconodonts. These are minute organisms that are contained in the rocks and which can be used to fairly accurately date the different parts of the reef complexes. So that diagram is basically the same as that, mm. except that it has the um, canon on donation as well. Um, uh, this, this one illustrates an important thing, that when the um, rocks were laid down, originally they were horizontal, but uh, over time um, the uh, cavities between the various organisms and so on were filled in and it resulted in a, a dishing shape of the platforms instead of being horizontal tops they uh, uh, dished like this wow. through pressure solution compaction Most of this is too detailed for you to just have in a few mm. words. Wow, so you see th things like this similar these days at um, Great Barrier Reef? Yeah, just little patch reefs. Yeah. Mm. Very long time. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, not that long. Yeah. So what is it? So these are stromatolites growing on top of what are called oncolites, which are little circular balls um, which have developed up on top of the platform and then been swept over the side and come to rest there. And some of them have had stromatolites grow vertically on top of them. So that marks the original vertical and that is the original depositional slope so that for every meter that you go up that slope is going through a meter of water in devonian time so by following right up to the top of this ridge you can say a minimum water depth in which these stromatolites grew wow wow and see here this is a um uh, a particular organism called a receptaculitid and it's come to rest on this slope and there, there's a, it had a hollow centre and in that hollow centre sediments lay down horizontally so that's the original horizontal and that's the depositional slope. You see this this is a bedding plane there, a sloping bedding plane, mm -hmm. original sloping bedding plane. And on it there are these organisms, um, straight nautiloids, which came to rest on the slope. And the stable position for a um, cone like that lying on the slope is uh, along the length of the, um, the actual nautiloid. So all of these nautiloids are oriented the same way directly down the slope. So that's the deepest mm, mm. slope. This is sloping at about 30 degrees or something. See all this is a huge amount of work. <laughs> Couldn't do it now, that's for sure. It all seems like quite a while ago now. This is my co op deep peas diagram. Who did it? This is Roger Hawking. 
She used to play for the hockey in Kobe. Roger Hocking did a lot of the work up there with me. And, and he wrote a small part of this, the rest of it I wrote. Anyway, you'd need to... Oh, these are them. This is the... Um, this is an amazing place. This is a cave called Pear Cave in... Um, the Napier Range, and this is a cave that goes back into the edge of the range, and um, at the entrance there, this is a stalagmite, and Billy Munro said to me, did you see Pera there? I said, yeah, I Pera. He said, when you go into the first go into the cave, you can see this woman crouching there. And um, she got her arms over her ears. I don't see that. Arms oh, yeah. over her ears. And she's trying to block out the sound of the men singing sacred song mm. of Chulaga, this culture hero Chulaga. And she, she didn't succeed in doing that. And as a result, she was turned to stone. Mm. And she's there they're still staring out at the entrance to the cave. Mm. And um, Chilaga lost his wife as a result of that. But he then, further along the range at a place, he raped his mother-in-law, oh. which oh. is an appalling crime in Aboriginal. And oh. you go to that place and you can see it there with this thing standing up there. Really? A red penis. Oh, oh. <laughs> The the, uh, the other entrance to Winyanook. I've Court. been to the other entrance a few times. I walked through a couple of times. Oh, I yeah. loved it out you know, there. It was just, just there was this, no one. This one here is, is very important to the Aborigines. There's a cave here with paintings in it. I'm this missing those the, drawings. The first um, drawing of Winyanook Gorge by government geologist E.T. Hardman in 1883. That's the first record of Wingele. He yes. called it Devil's Pass. An accomplished drawer. Oh, he was brilliant. Uh, I'll show you some of his paintings here. Mm. He's a very, very good artist. Um, and the interesting thing was he... he he was a temporary government geologist who went up to the Kimberley and explored that country there and was responsible for the discovery of the Halls Creek gold field. And um, he expected that his appointment would eventually be made permanent, but it didn't happen. So he went back to Britain for the British Geological Survey in Ireland. And there... He contracted um, typhoid and mm. died. Mm. And so he had been appointed, in fact, but he hadn't been advised. And so he died. But, but nothing was heard more of that until his daughter wrote to the Prime Minister of Australia in, I forget what year it was, but, you know, 19... 40 or something, I forget. Anyways, asking um, whether the government would... She was living under desperate circumstances and she th thought that the government of Australia might be prepared to give her a pension because her father had died at an early age as a result of the li living on black tea and, and damper in the bush. Very bad diet, she said. Anyway, they, they didn't give her a pension. Mm. <laughs> but she, the in, in, important thing was that her writing that letter, which was in turn sent to Western Australia, reactivated the Mines Department file for the discovery of the East Kimberley Goldfield, which was due to be discarded. They didn't keep the historic thing. No. And it was ready to be discarded. Oh, no. Her letter oh, no. So she 
kept this fantastic file. Mm. 